this. This function has arguments. It has a sender argument and it has event arguments that tells us more information about what actually happened. For the button click event, that's really not needed because, you know, clicked on the button, that's all we need to know. Right? When we click on the button, we don't need to know any more details about what they did. Right? So here's where we're going to put the code that occurs when you click the button. And I'll put a comment in here, and the comment's in C Sharp or with two slashes. Code to process when button hide button is clicked. Let's look at this method in detail. All right. Protected simply means that this event can only be called, this method can only be called by this object, that is this page, or any pages that inherit from this. Now, we're not worrying about inheritance right now, so effectively, protected means that we're only going to execute this code from this page, which makes sense, right? I mean, another page isn't going to want to execute this page's button click event, right? If anything, that page will have its own button click events that will get executed. Void means that this method doesn't return anything. All right? If you've done, you know, Visual Basic coding, you've created functions, and you have specified a return value. And you specify what type that return value is. All right? Uh, in this case, there is no return value, so you say void. All right? In Visual Basic, if there is no return value, it's called a subroutine instead of a function. Here, there's really no distinction between the two. Uh, uh, you, you can have a function that simply doesn't return anything. Here is the name of the function, and here is the events that or I'm sorry, the arguments get, that get passed to this function to give more details about exactly what happened when you clicked it. Again, not really relevant in this case. So, what happens is the framework is set such that when the button is clicked, this is the code that's going to fire. All right? So, now what I have to do is I have to make it work. What do I want to do? I want to take this calendar and make it invisible. All right? Now, to do that, we got to know two things. We got to know how to point to that calendar. All right? And we have to know how do we make it invisible. All right? We point to things via their ID. So, for example, this calendar has an ID of calendar1. So the code that we write is going to say calendar1 something. All right? Because we need to point to that element on the page. Point to the name of that object. Now, how do we change anything? Well, remember, this is an object-oriented environment. We change things by accessing the object and calling certain methods on that object or by setting the properties of that object. So, we already saw the visibility property of this is simply visible. All right. So, what we have to do is we have to point to that calendar and say the visible property we don't want is being set to true. We want it set to being false. So let's go and do that. I'll go in the code behind. And I will say when that's clicked on, calendar1.visible equals false. And we end with a semicolon. All right. So let's run this now. 
calendar, whoop, it's gone. Our show calendar really doesn't do anything. Now notice if I click hide calendar again, it stays hidden. All right, well, one second. If I click refresh, it stays hidden. Why? Because the server remembers the state of that. We set the visibility property to, to not being visible. So the server remembers that. It maintains the state every time we click that button. When we click the button, the form gets submitted back to the server, our processing code executes, and then the page gets redisplayed. You had your hand up a second ago? Um, something we did before. I don't know if that was like in a code behind file. That's what this was, right? Yes. Like, I think it was when you were doing debug. It was like true was in quotes, but now false isn't. So, like, sometimes those are in quotes, but sometimes they're not. I don't know what you mean. False is a, a, a Boolean, so, you know, it's just a constant, so false would not be in quotes. Well, when we were doing the debug, um, I don't know, I wrote it down as being in quotes, but maybe it's in a different That's kind of statement. She means the things in the little uh, side V's had uh, when you, because that's your statement of value in there. She's talking about the web config file. Okay. Oh, the web config file. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, that's something totally different. Here? It's, it's not ASP. No, this is an XML file, uh -huh. and any property in XML, regardless of the type, regardless of the data type, is enclosed in quotes. Okay. So, yeah, you got you got to know where you are, all right? And in this case, yeah, this is a property of an XML attribute, so it is in, it's always enclosed in quotes. This is a Boolean constant of false and within the language of C-sharp, and therefore it's not enclosed in quotes. Is this case sensitive? This, um, Absolutely. Like that, is that capital V invisible? Yes. What happens if you don't? Little squiggly. Don't know what the visible property is. For those of you that have done VB before, uh, VB was not case sensitive. So you could say X or capital X and you're pointing to the same variable. In C sharp, if you have X and capital X, those are different variables. It doesn't know that as being the same. Likewise, a visible property, you know, if it says it starts with a capital V, it starts with a capital V. All right? If it's calendar one with a capital C and everything else lowercase, then that's how you have to put it in. Notice also that the statement ends with a semicolon. No semicolons in VB. All right. Now let's go in and let's make the page to make it visible again. This should be pretty straightforward, right? I can go in, I can double click this button. What that will do is I will open up the code behind, take me to the default event of that control. Well, the default event of a button is click on. What else do people do with buttons? That's the main thing you do with buttons is click on them. And then I can go in and effectively copy this code. Change my comment. And set it visible to true. So, I can hide it, I can show it. Now watch this, I, it's on September. If I go forward to December, hide it, click show, it's still in December. Why? Because that control maintains state. It remembers its values from page to page to page. Now, a couple important things to remember, or an important thing to remember that I don't think I explicitly said, but 
if you thought through it, you could sort of reason this out. These are submit buttons. What does a submit button do? Let's review HTML. It sends the code back to the server for processing. All right. Now, in this case, it might not be obvious that that's happening. All right. If I click on one of these buttons, if you look very closely, it's telling me that it's reloading the page. You can see it click, or maybe not, depending on that. Because these are submit buttons. You can view a source of this, scroll down, look at the buttons. These are submit buttons, which means that this goes back to the server. Well, what script does it go back to? Well, it calls itself, because the action of the form is itself. So it goes back to the server and calls itself. Then any of the code, once the server is going through the second step, all right, um, that's where my code behind kicks in and causes it to be visible or invisible. Let's diagram what's happening here. Let's draw this on the board. Because again, in web development, it's really important to understand um, the manner in which the client and server communicate. Because if you don't, then some things are just going to seem just mysterious to you or crazy. So, here is my default dot ASPX and default ASPX CS. All right. Those are files that live on the server. I go and I debug my application. So I, I fire it up. That sends a request for my page, which is default dot ASPX. Default ASPX makes it to my server, my little development server here. It reads that default ASPX file and that ASPXCS file. All right. Notice there's nothing really going on in the initial load of, of this. You know, the first time I'm requesting this page, there's no C sharp code that gets executed. All right. So it takes that. What is this ASPX file configured to have the calendar? The calendar is set to visible. So the server goes and does its thing, all right, generates the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and sends it back to the client. And the client views on the page the calendar along with the two buttons. All right. So this is the initial load. All right. The code behind doesn't come into play yet because we haven't done anything really in the code behind. Um, when I pull it back up on the screen, you'll see there is a page load event, but there's no code in there. So nothing happens initially the first time that this page loads. Now, let's say I press the hide button. The hide button is a submit button. So it sends a request back to this page, all right, because it submits it to itself, default.aspx, but it passes some user parameters along with it. Specifically, it passes that hide button was pressed. So, the server then goes, remembers everything about that page the way it was previously. That is, the calendar was visible, maybe the month it was set to, that sort of thing. But then, aha, uh -huh, the hide button was pressed. I'm therefore going to execute the code to hide that, and I'm going to send back a web page that doesn't contain the calendar control, that just contains the hide and the show button. 
on one of these buttons, it makes another trip to the server. The server remembers all the previous properties of that calendar control, all right? But it also knows, it gets passed along with the request, it, you know, which, if either of those two buttons were pressed. And based on whether that button was pressed or not, all right, when it generates this page, this code kicks in then and manipulates the page. That is, it makes the calendar invisible when you click the shown button. When you click the hide button, or, or I'm sorry, when you click the hide button, when you click the show button, the same thing happens except it goes and makes it visible. So this is a cycle. It's important to notice that each time the button is clicked, we go to the server, this code does its thing, and recreates that page. The controls remember what values are that, that they had previously, but the code that we have in the code behind can change those properties. In this case, we're only worried about the one. We're changing the, the um, visibility property, making it visible, making it invisible. Questions about this? Yes? Um, when you were talking about the hidden fields in the source file, yes. um, you said that it that makes stuff available to subsequent pages. Yes. Subse subsequent posts back to itself, I should say. Okay, so subsequent copies of the same page. Yeah, not as part of the same, yeah, same. not other pages. Oh, okay, that yeah. That's the same so if you click on the link mm -hmm. to another page, then all that stuff's gone. Correct. All right, now let's think this through. We got this working. Let's think of what we'd have to do Let's say I don't want two buttons. Let's say I want a button that sometimes says hide if it's visible, sometimes says show if it's invisible. All right. Then, if they press on it and it says hide, it hides a calendar and it changes the label on this to show. If then you press the show, it changes the calendar to visible and changes the label to hide. So essentially that button toggles. If you click on it, it hides. If it's visible, it shows if it's not visible. And then it goes in and changes the label back and forth. Can we do that? Absolutely. All right. Why can we do that? Because all we're talking about is manipulating the properties of these controls. We're manipulating the visibility property of this control. We're manipulating the label property or the text property of this button. All right? Now, to be sure, our code's gonna be a little more complicated because we have to look to see if it's visible and they click that button, we want to hide it. If it's not visible and we click that button, we want to show it. And then we want to set the text of the label accordingly. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go in and do that. So let's go in and let's create a little toggle button. convention of taking my controls and just making like um, the first part of it being like a three character abbreviation of them, BTN toggle, you know, but some people like to write out the forward button toggle. Whatever you do, as long as you're consistent, you're okay. All right. The label for this, 
I'm going to make, since it's starting off visible, I'm going to make the text of the button say hide. So when it shows up, initially, the parameters that I'm putting in through this design mode, initially, the calendar is visible and the button says hide, which is, you know, kind of how we want it to be. Now, let's go in and double click this to get to the code behind on it. Now, what do you suppose the code behind is going to look like here? <coughs> it's going to be an if statement, right? We're not doing the same thing every time we click on this button. We're essentially, um, if the button's visible, oh, I'm sorry, if the calendar is visible, we want to hide it and change the label on the button. Otherwise, we want to show it and change the text on the button. So I'm going to put an if statement in here. So I'm going to say if calendar1 visible we'll take a minute to look at this when I'm done if it's visible I want to set the visibility property to false right because so I can already see it I just want to change it to invisible if it's not visible, then I want to set the visibility to true. Now that's only part of the job, right? I want to change the text on the button. What's the text property of the button? If I look at that button, the text property says it's text. So I can just say, btn toggle dot text equals show. BTN toggle text equals hide. Alright. So again, we can point to anything on the page and use it, all right? We can use it um, to determine our processing, all right, to determine what we want to do. Here, depending on whether it's visible or not, we make it invisible or visible, all right? And then we can also change the um, text to show and hide. Let's run this and make sure that it works. Then we'll go back and look a little bit longer at the if statement. So in C sharp, you don't need the end if. Well, let's look at let's look at it. Okay. I just want to make sure it worked first, so that you know I wasn't explaining it to you. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you also need this in there that I forgot to type in. So that does work. Let's look at this if statement. All right. In C sharp. Lines of code are grouped together through the use of these braces or curly brackets. If you notice, for example, this function has a left brace to indicate where the function starts, a right brace to indicate where it ends. Likewise, brace and brace. Now, groups of statements can include everything in a class everything um, in a function, the true parts of an if statement, the false parts of an if statement, the body of a loop. So anytime you have like a chunk of code that goes together as a unit, you put the braces around it. Now in this case, with our if statement, we have two chunks of code. We have a block of code that we want to execute if the condition is true. We then have a block of code that we want to execute if the condition is false. All right? 
So, the way the if statement works is we have the word if, we have a condition that's enclosed in parentheses, all right? If that condition is true, you do the statement between the brackets that follow. Otherwise, you do the statements between the second set of brackets there. Braces, curly brackets, however you want to call it. So this is the true part of the if. This is the false part. All right. So to answer your question, no, there's no end to any things. All right. If you have a block of code that goes together, it, it'll the, the end of it will be indicated by the brace. So this indicates the end of the true part of the condition. This indicates the end of the else condition. So um, I know not in this case there would be any, but um, else ifs? Are there, are there still else ifs? Um, yeah, I believe they are. What I typically do is I would put another if nested inside of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's cleaner code for me, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Now, with all these braces flying around, you better do a good job in denting your code properly. All right? Because if not, Syntactically, that's correct, all right? I didn't do anything to the syntax of it. I just moved where those braces were positioned. And that'll work, all right? But if you're debugging this, it's going to be very confusing to see what brace belongs with what. Now, to be sure, you know, if you put... Well, not in this editor. I say with some editors, if you put your cursor on it, it will show you like what it connects to, but it doesn't here. You want at a glance to be able to know where what belongs with what. So therefore, if I do this, I can see at a glance this is the code that belongs with the if part. This is the code oops, that belongs with the else part. This is the code that defines the function. And finally, down here is the end of the class. It's much easier to tell um, where those blocks of codes are. And, and again, the more readable you make the code, the more easily it's going to be maintained. Now, um, usually there's one or two things people do. Either people do like this, where they put the, 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 the first brace aligned with the eye and the ending brace aligned with the eye. Sometimes you'll see people that do this, that put the first brace at the end of the line and put the end brace over here. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with it. Um, I typically do this, but again, really doesn't, doesn't matter tons as long as you're not just stewing those um, brackets all over the place. A lot of times when you're running code, you know, the mistake will be you're missing a, a bracket. Well, if you take this strategy, it's very easy to line it up and to see 